I've shared a ton of videos here on my channel that highlight various habits that will help you own less, want less, live simply, and embrace minimalism. And while I've poured a ton of value into these conversations, I thought I'd offer you more by sharing five habits that have made me a better minimalist personally. So if you're interested in learning how to build more intention into your practice, then grab a pen or a pencil and jot this down. Number one is taking control of my attention, which means making a choice about where and to whom I'm going to give my attention to. See, I firmly believe that our wallet and values will follow what our eyes see and our heart desires. So if we're interested in changing the direction of our life, then we have to take control of our attention and stop giving it to things or people that do not serve us. For me, this meant being intentional about what I consume in the media and on social media. If my goal is to live an intentional and purposeful life using tools like minimalism, then every minute that my attention is spent on or doing something that does not move me closer to that goal is a sign that I've lost control of my attention in that moment, and I need to take action to correct it. Number two is being assertive about my choices. A big part of embracing minimalism is also embracing the fact that you're going to have to change your habits. And this starts with expressing those changes out loud, both to yourself and to anyone who could possibly influence you in a negative way, intentionally or not. I've learned that being assertive about your choices takes practice. Maybe you don't want to offend anyone or be labeled as a friend who quote unquote changed, but you have to remember that this is your life and if making these changes are going to contribute to you living your best life, then do it and don't feel bad about it. Number three is being critical and asking myself the tough questions. As I've continued to grow over the years on my own minimalist journey, I've learned where I struggle and stumble the most. And as a result of those learnings, I've also learned how to start asking myself the tough questions. Questions like, why do I want this? Why is this here? Is or will this help me achieve my goals? Is it pulling me away from them instead? Can I survive without it? Is it worth my time, energy, or space. Asking these questions and others like them have helped me make better decisions and avoid adding things to my life that would not add value to my life long term. Number four is telling my money how to behave. Now, although budgeting is a crucial first step to managing your money, it simply isn't enough on its own. It's also assigning a purpose behind the budget and having the discipline to actually follow it that matters as well. Let's break this down. Budgeting. To allocate, allot, assign, allow, earmark, devote, designate, to set aside. Regardless of how you phrase it, budgeting is about having a financial plan. Estimating how much you plan to spend per month, per category in your life. In a nutshell, it's about telling your money how to behave before it's given the opportunity to act out. Purpose. Behind the budget, that is. Purpose is about the reason for which something is done, created, or exists. And I've learned that if you don't know why you're budgeting or what you're budgeting for, then you'll never develop the discipline needed to follow it, let alone the courage to sacrifice those extra expenditures that aren't necessarily needed. So ask yourself, what purpose is my budget serving? Discipline. Remember, anything worth having requires work and effort. Telling your money how to behave is no different. See, if you're not willing to follow the budget you've created and make any necessary changes or adjustments that fit your situation, then you might as well kiss this minimalism thing goodbye as well. Because when you're disciplined about where your money goes, it means you're also intentional about how your time is spent and how much you're willing to consume. Number five is daily decluttering. Now, daily decluttering for me expands beyond that that is physical. Because to be honest, my wife and I have decluttered our physical lives so much already that there are many days where we don't come across anything that we need to let go of. And when we do, it goes directly into a donation bag in our laundry room. However, on the days that I don't cross paths with something physical that I can let go of, I instead continue to work on myself mentally and emotionally. For the last three months or more, I've been doing a yoga practice every day in addition to my weekly workout routine. Now, I've tried yoga before in the past, but recently I've really made a commitment to it, not only for the strength and flexibility benefits, but also the mental and emotional clarity it brings. This, in all honesty, has become a way for me to declutter those mental and emotional thoughts that arise through everyday life. I tend to also follow this up with journaling something as well. These two things have definitely helped me with my mental and emotional clutter, and hey, maybe you should give it a try as well if you're interested. 
As always, I hope I shared something with you that was valuable. And if so, comment below so we can continue this conversation. Also, I have a playlist here all about how to build the right habits in your life. Definitely check that out if you're looking to do just that. Keep growing, keep learning, and always stay true to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.